tonight's Conversations with Great Minds, I'm joined by one of America's leading progressive voices, political scientist Peter Matthews, currently a professor of political science at Cypress College and adjunct professor of sociology at Long Beach City College. Peter is a political analyst and a radio talk show host in addition to being an academic. He's also seen how the political system works from the inside. In 1988, he was the Democratic nominee for Congress from the district surrounding Long Beach, California. Peter's new book, The Dollar Democracy with Liberty and Justice for Some, How to Reclaim the American Dream for All, is a must-read expose of how our government has been hijacked by big money. Peter Matthews, welcome. It's great to be here with you, Tom. How are you doing tonight? I'm well, and thank you for joining us from our Los Angeles studio. I'd like to start with you, Peter. You're a professor of political science, radio host, former congressional candidate, activist. What would you say is the guiding principle in everything you do, and how did you first get into politics or interested in politics? Well, you know, um, I was actually a psychology major in college, and when I went to Europe and I saw the Berlin Wall, that changed everything. So I crossed over into East Germany and talked to the people there and asked how they lived, and pretty soon I started to recognize there were a lot of walls around the world, you know, and the walls between rich and poor, between men and women, between uh, different ethnicities, and I, I, I took some classes in international relations and uh, uh, world politics when I got back to college that summer, and I said, this is the field I need to try to explore more. So I went ahead and double majored in psychology and political science to find out more about economic development, exploitation, neo-imperialism over time, and imperialism itself. So it was very interesting to me. I've traveled to 27 countries to actually find a way to reduce those walls and create more justice, Tom. Equal opportunity and equal justice for all is, to me, my, my basic uh, goal in life to help with that. You've, you've written a book called Dollar Democracy uh, with Liberty and Justice for Some. In fact, uh, there, here's the book. Uh, tell us about yes. the book. Why did you decide to write it? Well, I decided to write the book because I was noticing that many of my students were having increasingly difficult time making it through college. And it wasn't their fault whatsoever. In California, we had tuition-free education from the 1960s to the 1980s until the elites took it away by giving corporate tax loopholes to oil companies and other big businesses. And in, the, in turn, they took, went ahead and cut the subsidies for public education and universities and colleges and started raising the tuitions by several hundred percent. And my students couldn't make it. They had to drop out and go work full time and go to school part time. So their dream was being, their American dream was being delayed and in many cases completely taken away. And I thought this was totally unjust, not just in education, but in every single area of our lives, policy areas, in health care, in the environment, in our food supply, in the Wall Street crash, in every one of those areas, you see the hand of dollar democracy, Tom where $6.2 billion was raised and spent in 2012 alone on federal candidates. This year, it'll even be more. And this started before super PACs. It started before Citizens United, when, when the biggest corporations bought both parties, including much of the Democratic Party, not all of it. We've got exceptions like Senator Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and other grassroots people like Senator Wellstone, who refused corporate money and won the right way. But the majority of Democrats and almost all the Republicans have been bought at the federal and state level, and our middle class is suffering, and so is our country, and we cannot survive without a middle class. You know, Aristotle said that, Jefferson said it, we all know it. Yeah. So that's Ta what happened, I wrote the book for that reason. Is, is that yeah. what you mean when you say dollar democracy, basically democracy that's been bought and paid for? It's been bought and paid for and through the areas of election financing as well as lobbying. Don't forget the lobbying part, in many cases, Lobbying consumes even more money where these corporations take legislators on vacation, working vacations to Hawaii, for example. That was done with our California state legislators by the energy and pharmaceutical and oil companies for vacation in Maui to discuss issues such as oil taxes or the lack thereof. So these lobbyists have bought and paid in election campaigning as well as lobbying our Congress and our elected leaders from city council on up. And I believe the way to turn it around is to go through several things, public financing of elections as they have in Maine and Arizona, and other states have brought it on, as well as uh, demanding a 28th Amendment of the Constitution that would remove corporate personhood and also say money is not speech and allow money to be, campaigns to be regulated heavily. And last but not least, we can start right now, Tom, by we the people making phone calls directly to our members of Congress and telling them that we pay their salary, they are our servants, they should do what we want them to do. And my last few pages in my book actually say there's a 13-point demand plan, an action plan, which we could look at when we come back to the second half, perhaps. But it starts off with asking them to refuse corporate money and rely on individual contributions, as Senator Bernie Sanders is doing very successfully. And I really hope that he can set an example if he can win this. But even if he doesn't, well, let's not talk about that. Let's hope that someone like him actually wins yeah. and shows the way to getting rid of dollar democracy. Yeah, or, or whoever wins adopts his principles.